Okay, so if this one stays constant, right? If we make this one bigger, we're gonna, when we divide, it's gonna make the overall number smaller. Yeah, so that's why when the volume gets bigger, density gets smaller. So yeah, if mass is the same and volume changes, if volume gets smaller, that means overall we'll get a bigger number. Like, then let me put numbers into this. So let's say mass is 60. I don't know, 60 grams, and that stays the same. Let's say that my I use 20 milliliters. I'll get an overall three grams per milliliter. Right. How about if I made this smaller? Well, then I would get a bigger number, six. So if volume gets smaller, density gets bigger because there's more grams per milliliter. Okay. Because there's six little of whatever's per one. But how about if this one got bigger? Density and smaller. So density and volume are opposite. They're inverse. One goes up, the other goes down, and the other goes up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's use that 20. But how about if volume stays the same? Oh, okay. So we'll use this one. Same kind of thing. So we had our 3 grams per milliliter, right? Well, how about instead of I instead of adding 60, I added 80. Or, I don't know, let's pick a big number. 200. I'm using easy numbers. This would end up to be 10. So as the mass goes up, density goes up. But how about if this one was small? Well, then this one gets small as well. So these two are inverse relationship. These two are parallel. As this one goes up, that one goes up. As this one goes down, this one goes down. Okay. But as volume goes up, density goes down. And as volume get, goes down, density goes up. Okay. That make a little more sense. I think adding in the numbers can kind of help. We'll see if it makes sense right now. So with significant figures, if it's 0 0.78, but you're multiplying, the 0 doesn't count? 0 doesn't count. Unless it was 1.708? Yeah. Or what if it was 1.780? That would count. That 0 at the end would count. 